Now, let's take the bow. It's hard to take it from a pencil to the stick because the stick is so much heavier. So perhaps it helps if you hold it with your left hand. The very first thing that I do is teach the thumb. I know some teachers will teach a beginner's bow hand by putting the thumb on the metal here. I do not do that, although if I had a three or four year old that I decided to teach, I might do that. Uh, most importantly though, the thumb would still be curved and I would aim for the inside corner because if you teach on the metal and it collapses, then that does not transfer at all to the adult bow hand or the big kid bow hand. So anyway, the thumb. We go back to our bow hole bunny and open the bunny's mouth. See how the thumb is curved? Now the thumb is going to contact half of the thumb will sit on the frog, half of the thumb will sit on the grip. The thumb will then come in and at the beginning I touch the hair with the thumb like that. This does not mean that for the rest of your violinistic career you touch hair. In fact, I hardly ever really do. But you need a starting point. This means the thumb must come in in a very steep angle and contact the hair. You can see it from this angle. Come in. Half on the grip, half on the frog. Touch the hair. Thumb is curved. Okay. In the Galamian book, he shows the thumb coming out at a slight angle. I think the Paul, Paul Roland one does too. This way. And that's appropriate because your hand will lean forward. But right now, don't worry about it. Just half on the grip, half on the frog. Very steep angle. Touch the hair. You're still holding it with the left hand. Now bring the middle two fingers down in the first crease or the first knuckle. Drop the first finger in the first knuckle as well. Again, once you curve it, it may look from the top like it's hitting. There's an angle you might see between the first and second knuckles. The, to me, the point of reference or the feel, the tactile awareness is what I'm looking for. So I feel if it has slipped out of that spot. Okay. Now you take your pinky and you drop it on top. I know someone told me once a very famous teacher used to have her kids put the ring finger on this little circle on the frog, the eyelet. Teach that it was a sailor looking out of a ship hole portal, window, that goes a little deeper than the bow hand I teach. And it also it creates a circle with the middle finger instead of between the two. It's totally appropriate. It's just not the one I personally use. My pinky ends up being just on the back side of that. Can you see it? There it is. Now you'll notice these two are together. Have a little space here and a little space here. It was a tradition for a while where one of the famous teachers had the kids spread their hands out pretty wide, but then later he reversed that concept thinking it created too much tension in the hand, and I agree. I think the hand needs to be somewhat natural in the way it would fall. Now once you get to this point, hold it this direction so that it's, it, it's not really lighter, but it feels lighter. You don't have all the weight of the tip pulling down. You're here. You can do some exercises where you go up down, side to side, pull it in and look at it. And when you look at it, is your thumb still curved? Remember, it needs to be up on the very tip, so this means the thumbnail has to be very short. You cannot have a long thumbnail pushing or it will flatten it out. At no time should the thumb go into the groove of the frog, and at no time should it start to pop through. If it does, go back to this, bring your thumb off, sit on the very tip.